welcome to episode 191 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 1st of January. So Happy New Year everybody. So I'm here to share all the things that I've been making since the last podcast. Well, I say this but I'm only going to share the things that I plan to share on the day that my baby was born because <laughs> I'd already sort of planned the podcast and then I've done some more things since then so I'm going to do the podcast that I did originally plan on the 18th of November and then next week I'll catch you up with the things that I've made since then. So there's been a couple of other videos I've popped up in the meantime that I'd sort of pre-recorded so that I would have something to put up on the channel while I've had a few weeks off um, but now I'm back on schedule for a weekly podcast so hopefully I'll be able to make enough to be able to show you something interesting every week we shall see if not I'll be changing it to every two weeks but I'm sure at the moment for at least the first few weeks of January I should be able to do a weekly podcast but we shall see <laughs> so today I have some knitting I have some cross stitch some sewing a blast from the past some confessions these are confessions from before Christmas as well so very naughty <laughs> and I have some information on my shop update and yarn clubs etc so if you're interested in seeing all last year's yarn clubs as an example of what this year's yarn clubs might be um, I will show those and I will also be telling you a bit about this year's yarn clubs as well so let's get on with the knitting shall we and I have a finished object and it is my shawlography shawl which I finished before Christmas and I'm really pleased with how this come out. It is quite a busy pattern. There's lots of different stitch motifs here. I have to use the boob shelf so that I can show you. <laughs> um, there's lots of different motifs. So I'm glad that I chose colours that were sort of quite close together and not too um, rainbow effect because I think that would have been a bit too much for my taste um, but I'm really pleased with how that's come out so I especially like this section here and these funny little loopy bits that remind me of pasta shapes for some reason <laughs> now it's blocked I think the colours sort of are brought together a bit better and I actually quite like this bottom border what I actually did was that I blocked it but I did a wavy blocking edge on the bottom so that it wouldn't be just a straight line and it's kept its shape and it's been blocked actually way over Christmas so it should stay like that hopefully because I didn't want it just a smooth line I thought it needed something a little bit extra around the bottom so that's what I've done with that so I'll probably wear it either my standard way of it does look a bit ridiculous when it's over the top of my hair um, probably wear it sort of like this where you get little snippets of all the sections which is really lovely or as a proper shawl over my shoulders my hair is very wet at the moment so <laughs> it's um hopefully I won't wet the shawl too much but there we go um, over the shoulders it looks really nice as well and I'm glad that I had a go at doing the mystery knit along this year I just get so excited when a new clue comes along the mystery knit along from Stephen West I always find is really fun to knit every year so I'm definitely going to do it next year as well who knows if I'll actually keep up with the clues for the so for the 2021 um, shawlography I did keep up with it most of the time except for the last week and then it took me a couple of weeks to catch up with the last section at the bottom just because I was busy with other things but I'm really pleased with the colours that I picked for this so I picked some of the colourways from my own hand dyed yarn so the colours I used were from my fade to grey mini set I will be offering it in a full skein as well as the mini set um, in a couple of weeks time but I will tell you on the podcast when they're available so I am planning on bringing all my yarns back into stock again next week on Friday the 7th of January um, so watch out for that I will be announcing it again on the podcast next week and I will be bringing in some of the colourways that I dyed for some of last year's nut yarn clubs as colourways for, for the shop. So I am really pleased that I finished this. It's really pretty shawl and I think that'll be something that I wear. I did dye this on a beautiful soft um, MCN base and I love that for a shawl. So I'm definitely going to be wearing this lots and I haven't been wearing it up until the podcast so that it'll keep it nice and pristine to show you and I've been dying to wear it. 
So there we go, that's my finished object for this week. Oh, and I forgot to show you the back actually. Um, I don't think the back is quite as nice on this one, but it, um, but it is very cool that there's these holes um, right through it. But there we go. Oh, I tell you what I did forget to say. So on the last section, I actually put the border on the wrong, wrong way round in the end. So it's supposed to be this side is showing but I actually ended up putting it on the wrong way, which incidentally I've noticed that I actually liked better because there is a more of a blended colour change. So if you look there, there is more of a blended colour change compared to that side. And I thought that the blended colour change looked like it went really well with this section where you have the same sort of pearl bump colour changes. So it looks like it was meant to be. But at the beginning I thought oh no I've done it wrong but actually I liked it better so I kept it the same everything else I kept as in the pattern and I followed so I selected which colors I was going to use as a b c d and e and then I just followed Stephen's instructions where I was going to place those colors because I think he gives you a pretty good idea about sort of color placement and not putting the same colours um, close to each other if you just follow what he says and also if you don't follow exactly where the colour placement that he's used then you might end up um, not having enough yarn of a particular colour. So there we go, that's once that finished. So like I said I have been working on some other things which I will be updating you on on next week's podcast um, in terms of knitting but I've got some other things to show you which I finished before Christmas um, and I want to catch you up on first. So next is my cross stitch section and I had done a small amount of my cross stitch that I'd started a while ago and this is how it was looking. To be honest I've not done any of this since before Christmas just because I've been busy with the baby but I do really fancy sitting down and catching up on this a little bit. To be honest I've not got loads to do so I'm doing quite well. I think I've done these sections at the bottom since I showed you on the last podcast but I do love how the colours uh, are sort of muted um, I think that'll go really nice with our house so this is the little school sampler by the cross stitch guild and I will leave a link to this kit because it came with the linen and everything all with it and all the threads as well so next I'm going to talk about my sewing so I I'd started on the last proper podcast I showed you that I'd started a baby mobile and I'd taken inspiration from a pair of curtains and the bedding that we bought for our son's bedroom and drawn some sketches out using some inspiration from um, sketches that people had done before of a fox etc and modifying that into a character that looked similar to the curtains. So I then used some felt and I cut out the shapes and used blanket stitch to sew those together and I ended up doing a fox, a rabbit, a butterfly, a bird and a hedgehog. So I thought those characters uh, worked well with the sort of woodland theme and the curtains and everything. And we had a mechanism that Adam had purchased from eBay. And if I can find the link, I will pop that in the description bar down below. But it does play music as well as turning around as well. Hopefully, with the magic of technology, I will have put on the screen a video of the actual mobile turning around so you can see what it looks like. As yet, we haven't got the cot in his bedroom because we're using the Moses basket in our bedroom, so it, the room isn't complete itself. So I will be showing you that later, once it's all sort of in place. This is just the mobile, and we've, we've attached it to the back of the chair at the moment just because we haven't got the cot sorted, because he's still in the Moses basket. Um, but you can see what it'll look like. I and mean, he's already shown an interest in watching the little, little creatures go round and listen to the music playing, which is lovely. So I bought the felt from a shop called Paper and String and I'll leave a link to those in the description bar down below. It is a mixture of wool and polyester, um, mostly polyester but there is some wool in there but it is a, quite a nice quality felt which sometimes isn't so nice if you just get it from a standard um, haberdashery but I did like the quality of these sort of heathered effect felts so I'll leave a link to those in the description bar as well. So my next section is Blast from the Past. Now I thought of using this item because of something I've 
thought in my confession section so it'll link in nicely but it is a t-shirt that I made out of some fabric from the same shop as I bought the new fabric from so this is why I had to purchase so Barbara would you like to pop over and show me the blast from the past t-shirt thank you very much Barbara so Barbara is wearing the Agnes t-shirt from Tilly and the Buttons. Now this t-shirt pattern does have some different variations in that there's there's a variation where you can sort of stitch it like this so that you've got more of a v-neck shape and some ruched sleeves as well but I've just used the standard sleeve length and sort of the standard neck but I do really like this pattern it's a lovely fit. I did to start with pick a different size on the shoulders than my hips just because of my measurements so I basically graded it out from a smaller size at the shoulders out at the hips but I love 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 this fabric so this is from a shop called Elsa Fabrics so and it's got this gorgeous cactus and floral watercolour and it's just lovely and I only bought a metre of this one because it's got a white background I thought well I don't want to have too much white in a dress because I just wouldn't feel comfortable and I because it's not quite as flattering wearing two lighter colours but I thought oh I love this so much and I had another look on the website and actually they do have one with a darker background um, but at the time I don't think there was any stock now I just happened to be looking on, on their Etsy shop and I saw that they got a small cut back in stock and I was like yes I have to have this I have to have this <laughs> so I have ordered some in the navy background which I shall show you in a second but I'll get Barbara to give you a quick twirl because this is the blast from the past section and not the confessions just yet but I do absolutely love this fabric it's a really nice quality and I've had several fabrics from Elsa Fabrics as well um, and they've been really nice and actually the dress that I'm wearing now is also another Elsa Fabrics which is a different watercolour print which is equally as nice and it's also quite a light background and when I'd made this I felt like it was a bit sort of pale and I couldn't bring myself to make a sort of white dress with it being even lighter all over so I bought some of this darker print thank you very much Barbara and I shall show you my new fabric right so this is the navy version I absolutely love this and actually I think I prefer it to the white background now I think when I was looking online it looked like a black background rather than a navy and I think with it being navy it really brings out this sort of minty green colour here which is absolutely lovely I have washed this ready to make something out of um, so it is slightly creased but isn't that gorgeous just love it so much and I think this is probably going to be a zany dress I think because I do love a pocket and a stretchy dress <laughs> so I did buy three meters of this I think um, so that I could, should be able to get a dress and maybe squeeze a t-shirt out of it as well we shall see normally for a zady dress I can get a three-quarter length sleeve zady dress out of two and a quarter meters if it's non-directional but this is directional so we shall see if I can squeeze a t-shirt out of it as well if not I can use it to make some lovely I don't know hair ties or something <laughs> so that is my first purchase and I did make a second purchase because I thought I shall treat myself before the baby comes and before Christmas. So I have had my eye on this fabric for quite some time and in fact I made a sort of wearable muslin of a dress that I wanted to make this into. So this is a black double gauze fabric and this is an Atelier brunette with gorgeous, with gorgeous gold embroidery spots on it and I just think ah oh, lovely. And I plan to do an indigo top or dress out of this for some time. So I I wasn't sure about sewing it in double gauze though. So I had picked up some double gauze from Rainbow Fabrics that was in like a yellowy ochre mustardy colour um, to see if the double gauze worked with the indigo dress and it does. So I will be making the indigo dress or top, I haven't quite decided, out of this gorgeous Atelier brunette double gauze and it feels really really soft I haven't washed this yet so it'll probably look a bit crinklier when it has actually been washed but just love it be nice sort of Christmassy dress but also very comfortable at the same time <laughs> so that is my confessions for this week my next section is shop update so I had planned to tell you about my new two new patterns that had come out on the 1st of December 
but obviously I'm a bit late now. They're already out, but I will quickly show you what they are. I did actually record a separate video just to show you an introduction to the patterns, but I will quickly show you them briefly. So this is the Starlight Wishes sock pattern that I brought out last year um, as a separate entity, but it was free with the Starlight Wishes sock set with bag um, last year. So that was my Christmas sock kit, um, but it's now available to buy separately. This yarn isn't the one that I dyed for the kits. It's just that it shows up better on the screen because it's all cream, but it's got shooting stars and then the starry sky and i had to add pom-poms because that's to represent a snowball fight in the middle of a starry christmas evening so that's the sock pattern and you can knit them in both four ply and dk weight yarns and the same goes for this blanket as well so this is my triangulum blanket pattern and i've got a small baby sort of blanket size um, just to show you as a sample and you can see that it's made of little triangles. So the Triangulum name is named after the Triangulum star constellation. And because last year's sort of advent theme was the Starlight Wishes, we had to have a star sort of themed blanket um, pattern to go with it. So the Triangulum Star Constellation is obviously a triangle shape because of the name Triangulum and I used that inspiration to do these little triangle patterns um, that link together and you can add it in sort of any order really. It's not restricted like you are with the Cozy Memories blanket. You don't have to go in a certain direction. You can just pick up stitches and put the triangle wherever you like. It's quite a simple pattern. If you've done decreases and a knit stitch and worked on DPN needles, you'll be absolutely fine knitting this. So there are instructions to put all the triangles together and also on how I've added the I-cord all the way around the edge of this and I've also linked some video tutorials on how to do the I-cord and join them together and things um, in the pattern as well and I'll link those in the description box down below. So there we go. So if you look closely you could use your colours to highlight like a hexagon shape there's lots of things you could do with this it's a little bit like a sort of quilt in that the, the triangles are all joined together to make a bigger um, blanket uh, but that is the triangulum blanket so the patterns are both available on my website and on Ravelry as well and I will leave a link to both those patterns in the description bar down below so on the 26th of December, I brought out the pre-orders for the January Yarn Clubs for the 2022, um, which I'm really excited about. I really enjoyed creating all the different colourways for last year's Yarn Clubs. So last year I did a music from the movies theme for the sock set, so I picked songs that were really memorable to me from my favourite film. I picked nine of those, so I did the clubs from January to September because the end of the year gets a little bit busy with all the Christmas stuff. And it just so happens that I also had a baby this year, so it was lucky that I didn't organise to do more of the yarn clubs over the year. And I also did the mixtape minis, where each month I pick five songs to go on sort of a mixtape and dye the yarn according to the inspiration of those songs. So it would be like five songs on a, on a cassette tape, basically. And you got a piece of card that comes along with the mini set, which looks like the insert in a cassette tape, which I thought was quite fun. Anyway, I'm going to very briefly show you last year's yarn clubs. I'm going to show you and tell you the names of the sock sets, but obviously I can't go through every single song of all the minis last year because there's five songs for each set. So I'm just going to quickly show you those for each month. But in terms of the sock sets, this one is As the World Falls Down, and this is from Labyrinth. The second one is The Power of Love, and that's from back to the future the next one is i had the time of my life from dirty dancing the goonies are good enough from the goonies of course the next one is take my breath away and that's from top gun and i did this in may because actually this is our song from our wedding and we got married in may so that's why i had to do it in may um so that's may and then i have june which is the never ending story I have July, which is everything I do, I do it for you. And that's from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I have August, which is two heads are better than one from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And then last of all, I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. So those are all 
the yarn clubs from January to September last year in terms of the sock sets are all inspired from music from the movies and now I have the monthly mixtape minis I'm like I said I'm not going to go through every single song but this one is January February March April May June July August and lastly September So there we go that is all the mini sets and you can see what I was trying to do in that each of the mini sets go together as an entity so if you were going to knit a cowl for instance those five colours would go together nicely same goes for all the sets so this year I decided to do mixtape minis again because because it was so much fun putting a sort of mixtape of songs together and dyeing the yarns according to those songs and basically they're all a surprise so you don't know what you're getting until it arrives on the doorstep and they're the mixtape minis are five 20 gram minis and they can be on a number of different bases so I do a merino and nylon base a merino nylon and stellina a bfl and nylon so those are all four ply yarns but I also do a merino dk that you can choose as well so you choose the base when you're ordering when you're pre-ordering the yarn clubs and you get the base that you've requested so that you've got a bit more choice really so those are the mixtape minis and for this year's sock club I thought I'd mix it up a bit and I thought I'd do power ballads my favourite power ballad song and the yarn will be a 100 gram skein and a 20 gram skein sock set and again you can choose between those four bases which I've just mentioned merino and nylon, merino, nylon and stellina, bfl and nylon all on four ply so those three four ply bases or merino dk so you have a bit of a choice there so I do have a preference to 80s and 90s music but I do pick songs from lots of other eras as well so it isn't definitely just 80s and 90s there is a bit of a mixture there and it's just really fun making a surprise yarn club for you guys so you can order the January yarn clubs for both the power ballads and the mixtape minis from now until the 9th of January and they will be shipped on the 15th of January so I will be taking them down and then dyeing them to order so do make sure you get your order in before the end of the 9th of January if you do want one of the yarn clubs so I will be doing the power ballads and the mixtape minis throughout the year until September so there'll be nine different months where you can purchase the yarn club and I will leave a link to all the details of the yarn clubs which is on my website which tells you like the dates that they're coming out and when they will be shipped as well in the description bar down below so that you can see ahead of time um, when things are going to be released etc so when the when the listing is ready to put to up there will be then a separate link for January or February or March etc um, so you can purchase those separately now if you want to purchase more than one month and say you wanted to combine the postage I'm very happy to hold on to one of the yarn club months until the next month so that I can ship it out together so that you get the combined postage cost um, but obviously you'll have to wait till that other yarn club is released and shipped um, but I'm very happy to hold on to yarn clubs from month to month so you can do several months all together if you want but like I said you'll have to wait till the last of those months is released um, so that I can post them all out together so if, say if you order you want to order January February and you've you've paid for January wait till the February is released and then I will add it to your cart for you and then I can post both those out when I post out all the Februarys if that makes sense if you have any questions just email me on crafthousemagic at gmail.com and I'll try and help you. So what I'm going to do next week, so on Friday the 7th of January, I'm actually going to relist a lot of my different colourways that I dye to order and also bags as well. And if you've already put an order in for one of the yarn clubs that's been released on the 26th of December, 
I can add things to your cart if you'd like or alternatively if you just um, create another cart order some other things and then I can always combine your orders just don't forget to leave me a note with your order or an email to crafthousemagic at gmail.com so that I then know to put the two orders together and then I can reimburse any shipping overages so hopefully that makes sense and I haven't waffled on too long so if you want to see my new son Jensen if you pop and have a look at my vlogmas videos I released part one and part two earlier in December um, you can have a look at how cute he is he's very cute so hopefully along the way if I have things that I've made for him he can make some appearances on the podcast a little bit like Barbara does <laughs> and thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you next week on the next podcast bye